Great, okay. Uh, Lorenzo, so let's just start with how this project came about and, and more importantly when, because it still feels quite fresh uh, in a lot of people's memories, certainly in, even in my memory, only, only six, nearly seven years ago. Uh, did, it, did it feel like that on the set and obviously your involvement with, with the people who were actually there as well, for them presumably it felt quite recent as well? Yeah, I think um, I think it really was a monumental event, which is why it feels so contemporary. Um, I think also uh, we went through some pretty exp extraordinary experiences with some of the survivors and and the families of the deceased, and uh, it was a emotional thing for them to come to set and participate and. They were very brave to do it, and they've, uh, interestingly enough, I think they, I know they all expressed um, a great sense, of, almost of relief, because it, it put a face on what happened for them. Um, I can't speak for them exactly, but that's how I hear their description, and, and I, think, uh, I think oil is something that we all know is an everyday part of our lives, so I think it's utterly relatable in terms of, oh, and, and, and it's a world you haven't seen. What convinced you that, that it, it was worth focusing specifically on the actual event itself mm -hmm. and, and not giving more time to you know, the subsequent events, the fallout, the, mm -hmm. the livelihoods that were lost? And, yeah. Uh, well, on. I think entertainment is partly about surprise. And I don't think there was anything that we could surprise people about the after effects because it was so well covered by so many people and so many things. Uh, to us also, as soon as you get into the after effects, you get into the politics. And we purposely wanted to stay away from the politics as much as we could. It is still a political story, but at the, at the same point, we wanted the audience to experience what happened that day and reach their own conclusions about how they felt about it. And so uh, as soon as you went into the oil spill, you were getting into a territory where you were, you were already going into an area where they had an opinion. And, and uh, it was better, I think, to stop it right where we did. Because really, it's a celebration of the people who survived and the people who died. And yet at the same time, obviously what draws people to, to movies like this, to Perfect Storm as well, mm -hmm. is, is, is the pornography of watching these disasters unfold. Why do you think people are so compelled to see these things and how have they become a genre almost unto themselves? That's an interesting choice of words. Uh, I don't think of it as disaster pornography, but uh, I think I, for myself, I can say that uh, real stories make you ask what would you do in the situation? What would it feel like? You know, you can, uh, in a fictional world, you can you can vest yourself in the characters and you can feel uh, emotionally connected. I think to a point. Uh, I think in a in a non-fictional world, you can really ask yourself, what would I do? And I think this story, in particular, a lot of people acted amazingly heroically and uh, with a lot of lack of care about their own personal well-being. And so that's what I, that's what I hope I would do, you know, um, but you never know. And I think that's partly why uh, a real world disaster is so compelling because what, how is someone going to react? You can't guess. I think, I think people have become so sophisticated in fiction that in a way they can almost guess what it's going to be. And, and, this, and yet, you know, the, sort of the caricatures of, of particularly the BP execs, the, these people who are mm -hmm. portrayed as reckless, who are portrayed as sort of playing fast and loose with safety, uh, is it, something that, that clearly resonates and resonates strongly with the audience. I think it's something that people would say they recognize quite quickly. Why is it so easy to put, to put people like that in that category? Because on the one hand, we look at them and we criticize them for how they're playing. But on the other hand, if we look at people like Donald Trump supporters, for instance, they lord business. They respect people who go out there and make money, who put profit ahead of everything else. Why do those two things seem almost... Boy, you're trying to trap me here. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Um, there's a really important moment in the movie where Mark Wahlberg and Kurt Russell have a conversation where M Kurt Russell says to Mark Wahlberg, is he making sense? Uh, and he said, you know, I, I never really like anything he has to say, but yeah, it's kind of making sense. And the other guy says, yeah, me too. And that's what our interpretation of what was like, was people agreed to act because whatever was being said, there was some sense to it, or, or else they wouldn't have gone along with it. So to me, um, you know, uh, the judge clearly, in the case, clearly found, uh, especially Kaluza, uh, the bladder effect, 
uh, was something in the judge's words which were, was made up, um, and yet it made sense. And who's to say it's not accurate on a certain level, right? Um, I, I think what is interesting about it for me is it's very much like a movie. When a movie goes over budget and over schedule, the suits show up, right? The studio comes. Okay, well that day BP came. Um, people cut corners thinking they're gonna help. Uh, it doesn't help to cut corners, but they try. And I think it's often quite well intentioned. So I actually found it a very human story and, and, and something I'd experienced in the corporate world uh, and, and seen in big movies where, so to me the events of that day are less about what people did that day and more about the fact that what are we doing there? It's on a larger scale, like, you know, uh, the oil in that well would have kept the world going for 12 hours. Is that worth it? I think that's really the question I'd like people to come away from, which is, because look, uh, anybody I think is hypocrite. I flew here. You'd be hypocritical to say you're anti-oil or something, right? I'm not. Uh, on the other hand, maybe uh, this makes you question some of your own personal choices. What is it about risks, you think? Yeah. One more? One more. One more. Okay. Um, well, I'll cut to a different question then. Well, why, is it, from a production point of view, why do you think big names need to be attached to things like this? Why, what is it that, that, that you think? I why think would it, these stories not work were it not for these big names? That, 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 well, I think in some respects, something of this big scale needs a big actor against it, because otherwise, in a way, the events could overwhelm the actors. Um, so I think it's different when you're telling, talking about a big scale experience, but to me, I've always made movie star movies. I like movie stars. I go to the movies to see movie stars. I want to see what choices they're going to make. I'm invested in who they are as a film goer, not as just as a producer. So for me, I don't really question it, but also I think the scale of this absolutely mandated that. And as, as far as, just coming back to the safety thing, as far as risks are concerned, you know, when we see these disaster movies, time after time after time, you have these people who are taking these risks, mm -hmm. who are playing a little bit of the What is it you think, as a, you know, as, as a human race, you think compels us to take so many risks? When we look at these movies and we say, ah, we can see in hindsight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess that makes us human. We're flawed, I guess. I, you know what? For me, I think, it's, I think risk is a bit of a narcotic. Uh, you know, it is something that makes you feel alive in a way. And uh, I think their job is actually quite amazing. It's quite dangerous, and it's, um, there's an element of exploration, which is very uh, frontier feeling like. It's a very manly job, so you feel there's a great masculinity to it. It's, it's, in a way, it's one of the reasons why I wanted Pete Berg to direct it was because Pete has a ton of machismo, and yet he has a ton of feeling. So he's a very interesting guy that he has the extremes of the two. And, but you have to understand risk-taking, and Pete's a risk-taker, to, I think, in a way, capture it. Great. Oh, well, I think we'll be back, so the, uh... <laughs>